Hey guys, it's Whitney. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today. Today's uh, video is going to be a little, well, there's a lot of painting in it, it's put that way, but I got five uh, Dollar Tree pumpkin sign DIYs that I am excited to share with you guys. So here's uh, some pictures of the finished product so you know what we're aiming for because there's a decent amount of painting in this one. So <laughs> this video is a little bit longer than I, I was hoping it to be. Um, here's just a mess of all the beautiful, it's a beautiful nightmare of what turns out to be gorgeous in the end. But uh, uh, these are just some of my staples. So you know, we've got some Dollar Tree picture frames here. Those are three and a half by five picture frames. Those are, you know, really easy in their frame aisle. This is like a seasonal item. Everybody sees these at Dollar Tree a lot, both of those. Uh, the backs come out. There's no glass in those. Those are going to be uh, two different colors. Then also these guys here I got at Michael's. These are in the artist area, like kind of close to the uh, canvases and such. It's called a cradled art wood panel. It's an 8x8. Eight eight. There's a six piece. It's a six piece packet. See, there, look, I'm pointing 8x8 eight eight, cradled art wood panel. It's beautiful that I did that for myself. <laughs> so I got six pieces of it and um, what happens is I, I wanted to use the inside there, that's why I'm pointing it. I'm using it like it's a picture frame because I'm not going to paint on the front. I'm going to be putting one of the punkies inside of it. Um, that I got on sale, by the way. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys a little bit more about that later. Um, these little felt pumpkins here are going to go on those small things, those small frames. I got those at Hobby Lobby. Uh, these are a couple guys I got at my local grocery store, Smith's. Um, at the checkout, they go probably in floral arrangements. There's a little uh, clip on the back. And then these two guys I have had for ages. These guys have been with me for years in my stash. They're from Hobby Lobby. They're just little pumpkin steaks. I'm assuming they either go in a flower pot or a yard. Uh, I'm going to, of course, use my uh, Spanish moss from Dollar Tree. And then I've got various pieces of um, scrapbook paper. And all of that right there is from Hobby Lobby at some point in the past. Um, so first we're going to start with painting things. So here I'm going to speed up everything about three times just to get through some of this monotony. So here I'm opening my new package now. These things smell good right there. Yep, I sniffed it. That's true. I'm not I'm not ashamed. It smells good. That pine, as soon as I opened that package, that pine wood was like strong and it smelled so good. But anyways, <laughs> um, just opening everything up. I'm prepping things to get ready. We're going to take out all of the glass, all of the, you know, the backings, the papers, uh, any cardboard, and we're going to get ready to start painting all these. Uh, some of them need base colors. Some of them don't. Uh, now these guys right here from Dollar Tree were a little bit difficult to get some of those goodies off the back there. So here's one pair of pliers. Here's my second pair of pliers. Still not coming out. And I'm like, maybe I should try... Uh, let's see, what did I pick? Oh yes, a uh, flathead screwdriver for the win on this one. So yeah, Domino, I got it off. <laughs> and... Um, we're going to save those for you know, probably who knows what. We're not going to put them back on because these are going to be standing up. So you can either put these against a wall or on a tier tray, but we're not putting those little hangers back on, but definitely save them. So now next we're going to prep our punkies, little flower pot punkies that we're going to paint because those are going in our pictures. So uh, moving on to the next impossible staple to remove that I try 75 different tools to take out, as you'll see here. Um, I wanted to save those cute little wire tendrils on there, but that didn't work out. My spackle knife didn't work either. So I was like, well, you know what? I, let me have a small victory. Let me take this raffia bow off and let me take this sticker off because, you know, my defeat was was too apparent. And then after I got all these goodies off the back, I just resorted to brute strength. <laughs> and the, um, the little wire tendrils ended up getting cut in half, but that's fine. But I ended up getting that dang staple out, so I won on this too. So after I did that to the second one as well, then we're just going to sand off all the billions of glitter chunks all over the front of this. Now, I had uh, watched a, a previous YouTuber, and I, and I can't remember who it was, but she had had a trick to use Goo Gone, like put it in a bucket, spray Goo Gone on it, use a little scraper, and that, glue, that glitter will just come right off. On that first polka dot one, the glitter came off pretty easy, but this one I'm doing right here, this one took a while. And I did not put all of this. Now, again, this is sped up three times, but I did not put all of it in the video because it is painful to sit through the second time. And I had to do it myself the first time. So um, I probably will try that Goo Gone trick next time. So it's just absolute monotony. It 
10, 10, 10, 10, 10 to get all that glitter off because it ends up having like a raised pattern on it. And you can still sort of see it after I paint it, but once we get all the goodies in it at the very end, you don't, you can't tell that there's patterns there. So first things first, we are going to put white uh, chuck paint on all these guys here. So I'm getting all my goodies out for painting. I have, uh, this is a Folk Arc brand white chalk paint. I got this on Amazon in a big old tub of it. And then the other ones you're seeing there are Waverly chalk paint and mineral, pumpkin is the orange one, and then the antique wax, in the, the brown antique wax is the brown one. Um, so I'm just putting a base coat on these smaller frames here. They're, they're plastic, so I don't even remember if I lightly sanded them or not. I can't remember. I don't think I did um, because they're plastic. So I just want to put a small one one coat on the back of the frame because if you know for any reason you see the back of it, at least it's painted white to match the rest of it. So um, painting these guys out first, and we're gonna put one coat of this white folk art home decor chalk paint on pretty much everything you're seeing here. All right, so now we're adding the addition of my ancient heat gun. Um, now, it started to bubble up some of the paint on the plastic frames because those frames can't take the heat. Um, so I had to just lightly do that uh, and, you know, as far as keep that, that heat away from those plastic frames. But I did do two coats of white on everything you saw there. So here I am taking my pumpkins and I am adding the Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral to them. So I'm doing one coat of... of basic mineral on top of each one of those because I'm going to dry brush right dry brush the white paint back over them. You guys will see that a little bit down the line. I was trying to do another coat here. I thought I was going to get a little fancy and try to do some actual, you know, shading and depth and yeah, that didn't work out. So I said, you know, when you keep it simple and just do what you know you like. So I had to put the white back over it and then I'll paint the, I'll paint her back in a solid mineral and we'll move on to other things. <laughs> I was going to try uh, my hand at, at some of that uh, detailed stuff that I've seen many people do, and you know, they always make it look so easy, but uh, sometimes it's just best for me to stick with what I know. Uh, that doesn't mean don't take chances, guys, if you, if you feel like you can. Again, some of these things, if you, especially if you get them at the Dollar Tree, they're only a dollar. Don't worry about it. It's a buck. If you mess it up, you can always paint it solid again, which is what you just saw me do. <laughs> So back to my little three and a half by five frames. Now I'm dry brushing the pumpkin color, uh, Waverly chalk paint and pumpkin. I have a chip brush and again, my chip brushes you can find in my Amazon store if you guys want. I got a nice little pack of, I think six or seven of them, different sizes and I absolutely love these. And they're not like the ones from the Dollar Tree. The Dollar Tree chip brushes shed badly. Um, these girls do not, but anyhow, um, those are my Amazon store, which is in the description below. And it's also linked in the first comment. Um, so now these other, um, I think these are five by five frames with the little decorative, uh, little autumn sign that I got from Dollar Tree. I thought those were also wood cause I was just going to stain them with the antique wax, but they weren't, they're plastic. So 
these girls. Uh, one of them will be painted white. And to go with the orange theme here that we have white and brown, uh, I'm going to be dry brushing over that in a minute, you'll see. And then the other one goes with the larger frame and those will be both painted mineral with some white dry brushing over them. I tried to keep in a theme. So these three here are grouped together that you're seeing and then the other two you can kind of see right down there at the bottom of the screen those are the two that are going to be put in the mineral color with the white paint over it and let me tell you when i start doing that dry brushing over it it's like it makes it all worth it all this little tedious waiting for paint to dry and then moving things around waiting for paint to dry i my hands you can see there i got white paint all over me i should have worn gloves i was lazy and i was impatient so that's my own fault. I was scratching chalk paint off my fingernails for hours. Let me tell you guys, I probably still, even now, yeah, I got some mineral stuck on one of my nails. I'm, anyways, it's my own fault. So unless you like the mess or you guys have a better way, you can give me some tips on how to get that stuff off of acrylic fingernails because my nails are not real and I have no problem admitting that. <laughs> um, it's hard to get that chalk paint off there. So here's my same chip brush. And this is the antique wax this time. So this is the Waverly antique wax. Um, it, it puts a, just a really good color on it. And I like to literally put a good dab on the brush and then you're, I'm wiping most of it off onto that paper. And then I'm taking what I wiped off and I'm dabbing back in just to go very, very light at first. Because remember, less is more. It's just like in cooking. You know, you can always add more, but you can't take it back out. So let's do the same thing here. So you'll see my brush strokes get a little crazy towards the end too. Like I'll, I'll get enough color on that I want, but then I'll say, okay, well, I want it to kind of like right here. I'm, I'm pushing more in two areas, three areas. Cause I want it to kind of look just messy. I want it to look messy. I want it to look old. I love that stuff. And then after I did the pumpkin on these smaller ones, I'm adding some, some of the uh, antique wax on this too. Not very much. I'm just using what's left over there. Now moving on to more painting, you guys. Here, this is uh, the two other large pieces. Now these are being covered completely in the mineral paint. So both of them take took about two coats each of the Waverly chalk paint and mineral, in order for it to not be, you know, see through. Like I tried it first. You see, there's a spray bottle there on the uh, left side of the screen. I tried to do that, spray the thing, and kind of get like a stain going, but the Waverly um, mineral color is a little bit too light, and it just was it just looked sloppy it didn't look the way i wanted it to so i said you know what we're gonna go solid and we're gonna do a white dry brush over the top of it and let me tell you when i put that white on there it like comes to life i don't know what it is about that mixture of the waverly mineral or like a gray color with the white over it it's very farmhouse but very almost country or french i mean it just depends on what you're going for i don't really necessarily state that i have a specific style i just do what I like I do it makes me happy and these guys make me happy so I just went with two different kinds of color themes just in case you're doing it more traditional you'll see the, with the other orange ones and then if you're doing more of a more modern farmhouse French farmhouse country farmhouse cottage whatever suits your fancy whatever uh, you want to call it just don't call it wait for dinner right um, this would be more along those lines so I did two different styles you could say so there's more of just the first coat and lots of drying time, first coat drying time. And um, I just continue to place on my uh, chalk paint and then use my heat gun, which I still haven't ordered a heat gun, guys. If anybody has any uh, suggestions or any ideas, I need, an, I need a heat gun for paint. This is an old gun that I use. It's a heat gun for embossing. Back in my scrapbooking days, this is for embossing powder in stamps. So I, need to, I really need to get a new one. <laughs> Here is the other 5x5 five five, uh, Dollar Tree sign. This one is also getting her coats of uh, Waverly Mineral Chalk Paint. And this one also took two coats just to make sure we had a good coverage. I didn't want any of the fake wood, which I thought was real. But anyways, I, I don't want any of that grain, any of the wood grain showing through. Just make it solid. That way, once we uh, place our top coat, not sorry, not top coat, once we place our dry brushing technique for the white chalk paint back over it it has the same effect as that wooden piece that you see there that eight by eight wooden piece from michael's um i got that i got those on sale that six pack was 24.99 but i got it for 50 percent off so you're looking at 12.99 for six of them so they're only about a little bit over two dollars each that is not bad at all and it's a decent size if you figure eight by eight inches 
it's a decent size and it has a very good weight to it so sometimes it pays to get some of these canvases some of these art projects some of these wood panels from michael's or hobby lobby those types of things especially if they've got sales going check this out guys here's where the magic starts look at that oh, i absolutely when i see that i get excited i don't know it's just like i if you can tell you guys i'm smiling right now this is the parts like when i'm putting stuff together when that white paint brushed over the sides of it it was just perfect to me and i knew at that point okay look i made the right choice i'm glad i didn't go with the trying to make you know a stain out of the paint so same thing with a chip brush you put most of your paint on your chip brush and then unload it right onto something else whether it's a palette or a baby wipe or you're holding a paper towel and then just go back and dab and dab and make sure you're taking most of the paint off before you touch your project and then you can see from there how you you know depending on the the brush strokes and depending on the pressure you're placing on there you'll see what you do now you could say i might put a little bit too much on that one corner now again this is the back of the item but i just felt like i really wanted to have fun with it and just cover the whole thing just in case, I mean, if you if you set this in a window and the back of it shows, or if you lean it up against something, or if you use it in a centerpiece and the back of it might show to someone sitting on one side of the table or the other, I just wanted it to look cute from all angles. I do that. I usually finish everything. So here I'm proud of my work. Look what I did. <laughs> and now for our pumpkins that are going in those frames, the all everything's got the same colors, mineral chalk paint, and then now we're doing a white dry brush over these pumpkins. At first. I went a little light-handed, but then you guys are going to see me really load up those edges. See that? They're so cute. So getting started now on filling in with this first one. So um, I got some burlap. This is just a, a roll of burlap that you can get at Hobby Lobby or Michaels. Um, and I'm just guesstimating there. And I'm cutting off a piece wide enough. And then I cut off the edges of it, the finished edges of it. And here I'm just fraying it. So you want to pull out those threads to fray the fabric or the ribbon. Just technically, this is a ribbon. It's a wide ribbon. It's a six-inch wide ribbon. Uh, so if you see here, I took all those threads out because I wanted it to look worn underneath there and frayed. Place that back inside the, our little square. Throw down some hot glue. Not around the edges because we're only going to use it where the pumpkin covers it. Now I'm going to throw down my pumpkin on top of that good to go here's me trying to save and use my trash like I always do I save everything <laughs> but I already had a bow planned out for it and this is a finger bow or a finger bow finger teeth bow or just um, I'm gonna show you guys real quickly how I make it because I was practicing these the other day so you're gonna hold the bow or your, your first tail between your thumb and your ring finger then you're gonna wrap them around your index and your middle finger but then you're going to weave in and out of those fingers for those next two loops of the bow so hold your tail go around both fingers weave in and out of your index and your middle finger and then once you get to the bottom you're going to cross over the middle pull them through the back towards the webbing of your hand and then that piece that comes over that's where you want to take your other end and pull that under and then just pull up and down to tighten it and then if you do like I do you tighten it a little bit too much and it's a little bit difficult to get off of your own fingers <laughs> it's like one of those little finger traps I made myself a finger bow but I trap my fingers in it <laughs> every time guys I do it every time no I, I mean you could put money on how many times I've trapped my fingers in these bows I make so that's how we do it now I've got another one at the end this bow I'm putting on my pumpkin here it has three loops on each side and the one I just demonstrated for you is only two loops if you want to skip ahead to the end of the video I show you in detail how to do three loops which it's just weaving in and out an additional time that's all you have to do is just instead of two you're gonna do three and so here I'm taking the tails but I'm really just kind of trying to figure out on the tails do I want to glue them down but instead I just use my fingernails and I kind of did a little curl with my fingernail and my thumb just to add a little bit of heat on there and it puts a, a perfect little curl in the end of that ribbon so starting with that Spanish moss from Dollar Tree that I love so much we're gonna place that down there at the edge and then I just thought this added a cute little like country feel to it it was just a cute little the, the, the moss was something I wanted to do on all of these and there are on all five pictures there is the same Zach Dollar Tree moss now I'm not done with this right now guys but you're gonna see me skip to the next one 
but I come back to the to it after I finish this the five by five because for some reason I got excited and I just put it off to the side and didn't finish it. So here's my uh, 69 cent piece of uh, scrapbook paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. I like the design. It's the black and white. It's going to tie in with the buffalo check of the ribbon on the other one. So everything you're seeing, like the the, the previous one had a burlap piece behind it. So on this one, I'm going to use the Dollar Tree twine for a bow. And then on the other one, it has a buffalo check black and white bow. So I'm using this scrapbook paper to, to tie in the black and white so that the two of them you can tell you can say is a matching set or at least they complement each other that's that was my you know that was my method to my madness you could say so just literally take the piece the insert put it on top of your scrapbook paper i traced it out and just cut out that cut out the pieces with my scissors and then put it back in and that's literally all you have to do now you could stop here if you want or you could be like me and sit there and mess with the <laughs> the 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 placement for about two, three, four, five minutes. <laughs> I was also trying to see if I wanted to have it raised or not. Now I'm not going to do that with this one, so I just committed and glued her down. And then from here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get um, that Dollar Tree Spanish moss that I love so much. And then we're also going to use a Dollar Tree pick of eucalyptus. And then one, the one next to the eucalyptus, I'm using eucalyptus right now, the next, next to it is an old Hobby Lobby pick from a few years ago. It's a fall item that's been around forever. They have it every year. It's nothing new that we haven't seen. So there's that Dollar Tree moss that we always see coming through. And then um, I'm tucking it in with a silicone tool there because let me tell you we've all burnt our fingers many times and then I'm trimming it just to give it a nicer cleaner edge even though it's supposed to be messy it's a it's a clean mess does that make sense guys <laughs> we'll go with that it's a clean messy so I'm gonna place a couple pieces of the eucalyptus Dollar Tree eucalyptus and then I'm gonna just literally cut apart little tiny pieces off of this little pick and I'm gonna use these for pretty much all five of the pictures this um, one Hobby Lobby pick goes very far, and I still have a bunch left over at the end of all five of these pictures. Um, it's literally just placement. You'll see me just adding things here and there. And you just pick things off, pull things off, cut things in half, and just start gluing things in if you're confident and you, and you like what you see glue it in. If you don't, just start placing things to see if you like them. That's normally what I'll do. I'll try to place things and say, do I like it here? Do I like it here? And if there's still some glue left from other things, you'll see me cut the uh, stems off of certain things and just kind of you know, jab them in here, get them in while the glue's still hot kind of thing. Uh, but this one I chose to go off to the right hand side. It just felt cute off to the right and I loved it. So that's just about it for there's not much there. There's like two pieces of eucalyptus and then one piece of like one of those little white flowers off of the Hobby Lobby thing. Now this is the jute twine from Dollar Tree. You can get it in the automotive section in a three pack. I literally just made a wrap up bow and I actually don't even know what this is called guys. It's just literally I wrapped it around my fingers around my whole hand and then I grab, I cut off another piece and I tied it in the middle. And that is literally all there is to it. It is the easiest thing to do. It, it doesn't fall apart, and you can do that with any ribbon, not just this twine. You can do it with ribbon. You can do it with all kinds of stuff. It is very easy. I have a demonstration of that at the end as well. Now, I made that one a little bit too big, so I'm going to use it on my other picture. So this one, instead of wrapping it about 10 times, I only wrapped it about five times around my hand, and then I'm doing the same thing. I cut another piece, and I use that to tie it in the middle, double knotted, and then the ends of that knot end up being the tails of your bow. And I'll show you guys in a second once I get her glued. Glu glued. Did you guys know that's the new word? It's called glued. <laughs> when I get her glued down to the punky, uh, you guys will see up close there. It's so cute. I love this stuff. See that? See? Bow too big. Bow good. <laughs> so 10 wraps, too much for this size of this picture for this pumpkin. So I did five. And now I'm very happy and proud of my work. And if I remember correctly, I'm good. Oh, see? Had to add one more thing there, so it just was too empty, I guess. Who knows why I do some of these things. And, you know, it's very interesting to watch yourself back. Have you ever guys done any of that? Is, are there other YouTubers, YouTubers watching? It's, it's just very interesting to watch yourself back when you think, what was I doing? Like, oh, yeah, I am, I am a bit of a 
craft commando, eh? A little bit of a lunatic. <laughs> so there, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with it. I absolutely love it. I love all the muted colors, but I love, absolutely love this, this set together. Now here's me going back saying, oh yeah, Whitney, uh, you forgot to add some of these goodies to your original one. So I am placing the same set or style. Now it's not going to be the same pattern, but it's the same style. So I'm using two eucalyptus, and then you're going to see me add in little tiny pieces off of this, this Hobby Lobby pick. This thing, again, went so far with me cutting off all these little white flowers, and the colors were great. So I was mixing some of the muted grays and whites along with these browns and I mean the eucalyptus has a little bit of like a mossy green in it it's colors that I would have never previously ever mixed before but I love how all this turned out the bright bright white in the buffalo check and that harlequin paper looks so good with the dry brush and then these little white white little they almost look like linen flowers but they're technically made out of paper it's it's a very porous paper that they're made out of but it's it's absolutely just I just I just love it it's stunning for me it makes me happy I love I love looking at them just makes you smile cute so here's uh, good shots with studio lights I think they are great what do you guys think you guys tell me let me know in the comments if you guys had any ideas if there's anything you would do differently if there's any variations you guys might use instead of the burlap or the paper let everybody know I love seeing you guys share all your ideas in the comments below it's so great I've learned so much from all of you as much as you tell me you learn from me I love it you learn something new every day so here's my next set, and honestly, guys, I came back to this <laughs> a couple days later from the first set, so I had forgotten that I had already shown all of my supplies at the beginning of the video, so here I am showing you again all of the same stuff, and here's me holding the scrapbook paper I'm going to use upside down. Isn't it great? There's that Spanish moss. Let's show everybody the same stuff again, Whitney. It's great. <laughs> Anyhow, so we're going to get started real quick. Same thing. Just place your backings on your scrapbook paper and trace them out with a pen, pencil, whatever you got. Sometimes you can even just use, you know, just pressure with like a, a an embossing tool or something just so you know you can you can actually follow the lines that you're making. But this scrapbook paper, guys, it's so cute. It says pumpkin pie and apple crisp. It just it the words on it, the coloring, the the yellow, the oranges in it, it's just precious. I love it. Now the striped one I I chose for these guys but I'm taking my little felt pumpkins out because I wanted to see do I want there to be technically do I want this lines vertical or horizontal one of my frames is going to stand up vertical the other one will be horizontal but the stripes are going to go the same way if that makes sense so actually they won't be going the same way they'll be going long ways instead of up and down you, there's a method to my madness I promise me guys I, you just have to take a look once I put the papers in there and then we glue the pumpkins down um, same thing. I took the glass out of those frames because those actually have glass in them, and I'm leaving the glass in, and I use those to trace those out. So now we're just going to pretend these are our pictures. Place them inside the backing, between the backing and the glass. Place the glass, my scrapbook paper, and then the backing over it. Close them up. And you can do this with anything. You could you could use, like, if you see something that you like. It's almost like making collages back when you're kids, like cutting things out of newspapers and magazines. If you see something that makes that looks really pretty, there's a, p a picture somewhere, something. You can cut that up and use that as a collage and put that in here and use them the same way, whether it's Easter and you're putting, like, a little moss bunny on it or it's um, Halloween and you see a you know a pumpkin patch you can use like a magazine insert or a postcard or even a greeting card gift bags anything that you see you don't have to use scrapbook paper but the same thing we're, we're doing here we just cut them out to fit we glued them down on, on this particular one there's gluing because there's no no glass but oh that is so cute i love the font on that too and here i am literally going to just 
start assembling all three of these girls together. So the felt pumpkins are going as you see me placing them here. Now this guy here, I went to take the stick out and the stick stayed in. So I basically had to break it off. It wasn't coming out, so that was pretty good there. So I cut the rest off. I might sand it a little bit to try to get that piece off, but we're putting moss on the bottom so it'll be hidden. Now I was going to glue it because I did want it to have some 3D height, but that clothespin on the back of that there was just too wobbly and it just wasn't solid, so I took it off. Of course I saved it because, you know, save everything. So in order to get the height I want, you see that little tumbling tower blocks. Everybody knows those well if you're a Dollar Tree person, Dollar Tree junkie. These are good for using for height. So I literally am only using one block right on the back of my pumpkin. I had to scrape off some of that, prep the back of it to glue this piece down. Now I'm gluing the wood to something painted, so I didn't use wood glue, I just used my hot glue. It'll be fine. Um, I had previously used a different Dollar Tree little square block, and it literally obliterated it with me trying to take it off because it was too tall. So this hot glue you know, against the painted is perfectly fine. Now look, you can stop there. Look how cute that is. You can stop there if you want. You just glue these things down and you would be done if you want more of a simple look. But you guys know I'm extra, <laughs> like the guacamole. <laughs> I can't not add a thousand things to it, but it literally makes me happy, right? Do what makes you happy. Don't care what the norm is. Don't care what the rules are. It's crafting. It's supposed to be fun. If if it makes you smile, then keep going ahead and doing it. Here's two more finger bows, finger finger bows that I made a long a, a little bit ago when I was practicing, and so. Um, we're just going to place those on and here we start with our moss. So same thing as before. I grabbed a decent amount, put my hot glue down and then tucked that in there. So you see me get this little dowel and this is just a piece left over from another project. I use everything over again. And so I'm tucking it a little bit underneath the pumpkin just to get it under there a little bit because it does have a 3D height. I love the way it looks like that. Uh, and then of course trimming off things so that she looks a little bit tidy. It's a messy, it's a messy, a messy neatness, you know, those are the words we use here, messy neatness. And now on these I knew, I'm thinking that's just like a little bit too much on the bottom of that, that just looks ridiculous. So I had to make sure I only used a little bit. Now, at that point, I can tell you, I remember, I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to use the moss. I end up using just a small amount and it ends up looking so cute. So you guys here can actually literally watch my thinking process. I'm trying things out in the middle. I'm pushing things around. I haven't used any glue yet. Might put my bow here. I don't know. Just push things around and find, find different ideas. You can see me move things around. This is just literally the thought process. The creative, the creative process is happening. And Don't ask me why. I just said, you know what? Let me just glue this down in the corner. Because I literally didn't even try that. I just glued it down. <laughs> Something just said, hey, glue me here. So I did. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. We are going to see more of the same as far as take little pieces out, cut things in half, add them here, add them there. And you guys, I'll just uh, stay quiet and let you guys watch the rest of this creative process take its shape. And also, if you guys like my videos, if you've ever learned anything from me, uh, if you can, please, I would absolutely appreciate a like or a subscribe. Any little thing you do, even just commenting on a video, gives me interaction and helps YouTube recognize me and maybe suggest me to more people that haven't seen my videos. It, it just helps my channel grow, and it's just the best thing that you can do that's free for both of us, sort of. <laughs> and it's just, it would be greatly appreciated. And then if you so choose to, I actually do have a coffee page, and it's a K-O-F-I. It's in the description below and in my first comment. If you want, you can follow me there. Some of my DIYs you see here will be up for sale at some point. I plan on trying to list them there. Um, and then also, it's a great place to send donations should you choose to. Definitely not required, but any little, any little amount helps. Any small amount helps. Uh, help me maintain my channel to keep doing these videos and keep making things come happen and then here there's me planning things out on the other opposite side because one is horizontal and one's vertical but you know thank you guys so much if you're still here with me and if you're one of my you know my tried and true uh supporters the ones that have been from the beginning thank you guys so much uh, most of you guys are, have been with me for a very, very long time. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm very happy to have you. 
Um, there really sometimes is not, <laughs> I don't make much sense. And when I do, it's usually me joking with myself. Cause if I'm, if anything, I'm nothing if I'm not self-entertained. <laughs> so here we go. I'm just showing you guys, put some more goodies in here, glue a bow here, glue a bow there. And then I'll just let you guys take a look and watch this uh, rest of these little creative pieces find their homes. Okay, so we got the bow going in. We got all those other little pieces that are Frankenstein together. Look at how cute it is. I think I love this one the most. I don't know what it is. It's that scrapbook paper back there. It's that font. Look at that. Pumpkins, pumpkin pie, spice, apple crisp. It's just, I don't know what it is about that scrapbook paper, but... And these little guys, these little girls, they're so cute. I ended up adding some more moss to this, the horizontal one with, with the little fat pumpkin on it. But um, the set together, I just, I don't, I love them. I absolutely love them. You guys tell me what you think. Okay, so here is a real time, not sped up. I'm going to show you guys the three loop way to do the finger bow. We'll try this one more time. <laughs> so you're going to hold your first tail between your thumb and your ring finger. You're going to wrap your ribbon around both of your fingers and you are literally just going to weave it three times in and out of your index and your middle finger. When you come up through the bottom on your last loop, you're going to push the ribbon diagonally to the side between your fingers where the webbing is. You could say between the webbing of your index and your middle finger. You're going to pull that from the back, you're going to pull that down, and then now you have a diagonal piece of ribbon right here. You're going to take your tail and you're going to tuck it under itself and then you're going to lose it, and then you've got big old sausage fingers, like I mean, and you've got fingernails. So you're going to tuck that under that diagonal piece and then pull back and forth, up and down, and that's where we're going to lock our fingers together and try to wiggle them through. Now your finger bow has been completed. Now you have to get it off of your fingers. <laughs> Don't be like me, guys. I tie them, I tie them way too tight, and then I can't get them off. <laughs> happens every time. I, I, <laughs> it's, 
very comical. Half the time, I, I spend more time trying to get them off my fingers than I do making them. It takes a lot of practice to sit down, watch a movie, or just sit down with something like another YouTube video, or in fact, play my video while you're playing, while you're sitting down with just a, a, a spool of ribbon, just get some cheap ribbon or some twine from somewhere and just practice. And I literally have a small box full of these little finger bows with all different kinds of ribbon and twine. Here's some other items. This is obviously uh, two more Dollar Tree examples. So there's the farmhouse stripe ribbon and then also the Dollar Tree lace ribbon. And those are just two loop bows. But again, the thicker the ribbon, the more cumbersome it can be. But again, just practice makes perfect on that. My, my finger bows in the beginning were horrid. <laughs> Trust me, they were horrid. I've been practicing and I still need practice. So now this one, we'll do this again too, just because we're here, might as well. A little bit more close up. So take your twine and I literally just hold it in the middle of my hand and wrap it around all four of your fingers. So your thumb is holding the one end and this is about 10, probably 10 or 12, you know, circles around your hand just do as many as it feels like for the thickness you want to make a bow for so that's me giving myself signs I guess I'm not absolutely sure what I was doing specifically since when I was recording this I knew that I wasn't going to record the audio so I have no clue what I'm doing guys so even I can't help you there <laughs> so I'm pinching it in the middle here because I've cut the other piece you know you've got two end pieces there I'm pinching it in the middle and I took another piece off of the twine literally does not matter how long it is and you're really just going to place it in the middle of what you have wrapped around your fingers previously and you're just going to tie a double knot and if you're going to be a little uh, chaotic such as myself um, you're going to see that I, I tied it crooked so one side's bigger than the other so now you have to use your fingernails if you had some I have longer nails and my big old fingers to try to undo this so I can move it more into the center because obviously one side of my bow is bigger than the other and that bothers me. <laughs> That's that neatness, that neatness uh, goblin inside of me. So I just loosened it, scooted it over a little bit, made it even in the middle and here I'm fanning out my loops. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I felt like doing it because I thought it looked cute. So fanning out the loops a little bit just to make sure it looks cute. And then I'm tying my second knot. I double knot everything. So to make sure you get a tight knot, it's left over right and then right over left. And you will always get a square knot. Thank my husband for that. He was a boy scout. I was a girl scout, but you know, they didn't teach us how to do knots or any of the cool stuff. We got to sell cookies. <laughs> and that's how cute that one is. That's just a little, you know, basically, I don't know what you call that, a hand bow or... That's a finger bow also, but it's just the, the, that one you can't mess up, guys. It's so simple, and it, it's the cutest thing ever. And different twines and different ribbons, it looks different. It's it's just a, another take of a different kind of messy bow. I love it. She's so cute. And there's it. That's it, guys. That's all five of our cute little Dollar Tree happiness. So... Thank you guys so much for everything. Thank you for still being with me. Thank you if you're still watching. And again, as much as you can, take care of yourself and each other. You guys do a great job of that in the comments with each other. You guys have helped me build a wonderful community, and I can't wait to do more. So until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video. So happy crafting. Bye-bye.